Hey everybody, it's you here. Whether you're an RV or a fifth wheel travel trailer or even a van lifer, there's certain things you want to uh, definitely think about before you go out and buy yourself a composting toilet. One of the major ones is dimensions and where you're going to put it in your rig. It's going to make a major uh, choice. And it's going to limit some of your choices. A lot of people make their own homemade composting toilets, which is fine and dandy. But if you're going to be purchasing them, you definitely want to know exact dimensions of where it is, where it's going to, and what size it is. And not only the size dimensions of it, but what it requires in order to use it. I mounted our toilet in the shower. It's got a removable base. The shower is 31 by 28. So a nature's head would fit in here also, but there's problems with the nature's head versus the air head, which is the one that I'm sitting on now. The major difference is the width from the front to the back. All right, now from the front of the unit, from here to the back of the unit, it's going to be 15 and a half inches deep. From the, from the height of this, from the base to the top of the lid with it closed, is going to be 19 and a half inches high. And with the L-type handle on it, the width is going to, the overall width is going to be 16 and a quarter inches wide. That's the di dimensions of the airhead, which is what this model is, versus the nature's head, which would be 19 inches from the front to the back, deep. I'll put a little asterisk on that one because there's a certain reason why. This is 17 inches wide, which isn't very much wider, 23 quarters of an inch wider, and it's 21 inches high. So overall dimensions isn't too much different. The biggest is the depth from the front to the back. So from here to there, and you can see I've got this one about, about an inch from the wall so when you open the lid it goes up and it stays up straight and there's a little bit of a tilt back on it really nice and comfortable now I say an asterisk because on nature's head you can do the exact same thing you can open up the toilet seat the toilet lid it works exactly the same but it's when you get ready to empty that's where the difference is and I'll show you outside the van of how to prep this and set it up and get it ready and I'll also show you the major difference between the nature's head as far as emptying it in a small confined area and that vent there I'll show you a little trick I did on my van build so stay tuned all right this is the airhead toilet. I like this. It's got seals. It seals it here and seals it here. It seals between the head of the tank and the base of the tank. So that way there it's all airtight. It can separate. Comes off. I usually turn it upside down so that I'm not sitting the seal on top of anything it's got a seal that that seals off the liquid tank inside of the solids tank it's got a little hand crank that turns your compost and aerates it on the airhead your liquid tank is separate totally separate on the nature's head tank 
it, there's actually a piece that this slides into which I don't like that because when you pull this out now you have a big empty empty space here which makes no sense now while it's mounted in the van I have a removable plate there's little thumb screws right here that, are, that have brackets so this just drops right in clips right into place take your thumb screws done on this unit it has let me go ahead and reassemble this real quick it has little vents little screen here they send you the screen this is more or less to keep like little bugs stuff like that from, from going in now what i've done is i've gotten a piece of tubing that fits in the discharge hose on the opposite side that on the discharge hole i put a, another piece of screen on it with the ceiling o-ring that way there i can change this piece out whenever i want to and i just push that in there and it seals that side up from bugs getting inside also now as you've seen in the video you can lift the lid up and it hits the wall about that much of an angle and then this follows no problem when you're ready to dump this you have the four thumb screws down here you loosen them up <clears throat> you remove the the liquid side of it this will come off and you're once this comes off you can either a get a trash bag put it over the top of this use the hand built-in handles turn it over dump everything out rinse it out reset and you're, and you're ready to go or nice thing I like they give you a heavy-duty lid that also has a seal on it and it has the built-in thumb screws you just line it up I need to undo these screws all the way but you line this up you push it down on there tighten your thumb screws and then you can carry the whole thing like a gigantic cooker bucket bucket but I wouldn't I've never used this yet I don't plan on ever using it it's easier just get a trash bag dump everything into a trash bag you're good to go now on a nature's head a lot different story in theory it basically works exactly the same but this is where limitations come in and knowing what size you have to work with because with the airhead you give it a quarter of a turn then you can lift it straight up and off with the nature's head you actually have to it's hinged on the back of it you actually have to tilt the whole unit back which is an additional four to five inches so now instead of 19 inches from the front to the back now you need an, adi an additional four to five more inches behind that for the tilting of the entire head unit. Once, once you get it up, then you can take it off and all that. But that's, that's going to come into the limitations as far as the size that you're dealing with with your, with your build. Now mine is 28 inches deep, so I have plenty of room. I made, I made sure I gave myself approximately one inch of space betwe between the very back of this, of the, of the hinge brackets, and the wall itself. So that way there, when I open this, it actually leans back slightly. So that it, I don't have to worry about it like being straight up and down, where it can, be, it can feel kind of uncomfortable. It actually tilts back a little bit so that you feel more comfortable when you're sitting on the throne these seals work really good the biggest issue that you would ever have with these is you need to keep it closed because as long as you keep it closed air goes in 
through this vent here because you have a motor, a fan motor, which draws air through it. And if you leave this open, of course, air, air is going to take the path of least resistance, go right down through the top. Whoop, straight back out. You need it to go through the side so that it aerates and dries or semi dries. The peat moss or coconut core, core, I do believe that's how you say it. I'll put it right here. <laughs> and, but you need it to semi help with the decomposing. Uh, I forgot what it's called. <laughs> with the decomposing of the peat moss or coconut that you're using or whatever material you're using. Some people are using the same bedding for hamsters. I don't know if that works or not, but I, I mostly use the coconut core, but I, I couldn't pick any up, so I went ahead and picked up some uh, peat moss. It works just as good. As far as the liquid side of it, let me swap these around. As far as the liquid side of it goes, they have a little sight glass on here, and it's opaque, so you can kind of see through it, but you can't actually see through it, which is kind of nice. The material, you cannot see through this thing at all, but you can get a flashlight, stick it to it, and you can see where your level is. Very, very, very simple. If it gets up to this point, you can kind of see the level pretty easy, even without a flashlight. I would rather have that than a clear piece of plastic or a clear uh, piece of glass. And also it comes with not one but two lids just in case you lose one of your lids. And all you do, just screw it on top of this nifty little handle. I've seen some people, some people have talked about these straps being a fabric material. Some people don't like that idea. If you don't like the fabric part, there are two Phillips head screws on top. You can just pull those out, get yourself a piece of rubber if you feel more comfortable with rubber, and just replace the handle with rubber. But lift it up. That looks a lot more inconspicuous, I guess that's the word. But it's a lot, that's a lot more aesthetic carrying like through a campground. And you go dump this into the toilet or a urinal and you're good to go. So with some of these units ranging over a thousand dollars, it's definitely good to know the dimensions that you're going to be installing this in. Don't just take it from somebody that just showed you a video like this. Make sure you do your research because you're going to be spending a lot of money. Now in the van, I showed you this this little. Uh, piece of hose here now a lot of vans you see they'll either have it like down on the side or they'll have it up on the roof they'll have those little directional vents so when you're driving it actually is supposed to in theory cause a low pressure which pulls air in through one side sucks it out the other side that's pretty cool if you run your air conditioning inside your van it can do the same thing. You can push, you can push the air through here, out the side. The only bad thing is when you have wind blows backwards through it, it can actually blow the air back through and into your van, which you don't want that. Now, I've never had any smell at all come from this. Now, I, as you can tell, I don't have anything on the sides. You've seen, if you've seen my videos before, you'll see the drones. There's no uh, protrusions through the roof for this airhead. What I did, and I'll see if I can throw some pictures of it. I do believe I still have some photos of it. I ran mine and through the back corners of the van. On the inside of the ProMaster, you have little flaps that helps when you close your doors. Well, I decided I don't need both of them. So I took one of them out, modified it, and I ran the I ran the hose from the toilet all the way back to the corner. 
and I'll give you I'll give you a shot of where I ran it to. Right behind this corner corner panel right here is the fan. If you've done your van build already, you'll notice that there was a little square black piece right behind this. Well, you pop off this whole panel. You will have to replace the clips once you pull this panel off. Some of them do automatically just snap off. But you will have to upgrade the fan that comes with this unit and get an upgraded fan, which I'll throw the links down below. Hopefully I still have the photos. If so, I will pop them back up on the screen again. Now I have made modifications since the original photos. I just didn't take photos of the improvements. So it's a lot better water sealed. But I have, I have not had no problems at all. The vent actually blows out down here on the very bottom. Where is it at? It's right down in this area here is where the air actually vents out at. Which is really nice. You might be able to hear the fan. Let me see if I can get close enough. So that that helps out a lot. Water can splash up there all at once too. As I'm going down the road, the wind just blows over the top of this. It doesn't hinder it in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Going down the road, I've actually disconnected this hose from the unit. Got a piece of little piece of uh, toilet paper, put it in front of, in front of the tube. Even going down the road at highway speeds, it still is pulling air out. And honestly, I think going down the road, it even pulls it through quicker, which eh, still a plus to me. Now, prepping these are very, very simple, very easy. Remove your liquid container. Take off the head unit. And you're left with this. What you're going to want to do, turn your handle so it's in the down position. You'll see the center bar. You're going to want your peat moss just below that center bar. So let's start filling this thing up. Now, once you get it filled to the level you want, now you're going to want to add some water. Some people will actually pre-mix their peat moss with water. I, I, I usually mix everything while it's in here. So, I'll just add water to it. It looks like a lot, but the peat moss will absorb a lot of it. You can use the handle to get it crunk up and, and mix some you want it damp but you don't want it soggy there's also an enzyme pack that comes with the airhead when you first buy it but that's good for when you first start like, like when you're on your first your first time using it but after that you don't you don't have to you can go back through airhead to purchase more uh or i, I mean i can just throw i'll throw a link down in the description below where you can pick it up you can pick it up from amazon you can even get it from lowe's so you don't have to go through the affiliate links you can even pick it up at Lowe's, you just buy a large container and split it off into little Ziploc bags. If you want it to, for like to make multiple packs. And then, so once everything's nice and about the same, what you can do is you can just let this sit for a little bit. Because the water 
will expand. The peat moss will absorb more. And if you need to add more water, do it little bits at a time. Now using these can be a little bit of a challenge for some people because some people just aren't used to using composting toilets. You don't use them the same way you normally would use say your toilet at home. There's a couple minor differences and two of the major differences is when you go number one and you go number two. Well, when you go number one for guys and when you go number two for anyone. When you go number two, what you use is coffee filters. You want to use the natural unbleached ones because they biodegrade really nice and fast. And all you have to do with these is step one, open your lid. Step two, place it in there. Step three, do your do, which I'm gonna, since I know the peat moss is good and clean, I'll just use this as an example. You're gonna do your do. And when you flush, you pull the handle, down it goes, and it's gone. Just remember, close the lid. Now for the number one for guys. You want to aim this area. Don't want to go straight down into the holes. The manufacturer says no. Do not do that. You want to aim for over here on the sides. That way there it gets deflected, hits here, drains to your forward tank. Females, when you do, when you go number one, you just go normally. Anything goes in here, rolls forward. Any liquids. Number two, you just want to make sure you use that coffee filter as best as possible. The coffee filter will stop the solids. It usually lets the liquids pass right through or they can overflow and still go down the way they're supposed to I know that's the part a lot of people don't want to talk about but it's one of the questions that people or one of the answers people we always have questions for alrighty so now you are ready for your next adventure well almost I forgot one little thing now you're ready. Well, hopefully the video uh, answered some basic questions for people uh, about composting toilets. If so, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button down below. If you, and if you're new to the channel, go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you want to see more videos, go ahead and hit that little playlist here and it'll send you to a bunch more videos that we've been putting out. So, until next time, y'all be safe out there.